White supremacist oligarchs are trying to claim that the Venezuelan elections are fraudulent, but they have some of the most strict policies for voters in the world. You can't even vote without your fingerprint, forget an ID, unlike another country. And so, to question it is laughable. Nobody really wants Juan Guaido in there. The last time this guy came out in public, around the general population, they shot at his car. He's clearly a CIA operative and nobody knew of him until they propped him up. They can't do it with Caprilius because he was on house arrest for murdering a bunch of people. I think, what, 30, 40 people. And every time I tell this to the Venezuelans who are pro-USA, they put me on block because they know I'm right. They know I'm right. Now, looking at the situation in Ethiopia, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hard battle. But what the white supremacist oligarchs are gonna try to do is now that they have their puppet in Sudan, they're gonna try to run supplies to the Tigray through South Sudan. That's what they're that's what they're gonna do, because they got that new puppet in there. Because they need to balkanize Ethiopia. It's one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. And with their ties to China, they, the white supremacist oligarchs can't afford. Can't afford to have that sort of stability. Working against a favor. Remember, the white race needs to feed you. You don't feed them. That's what like Tarina she said. They're always nice to the black person that works the crappy job. They're always nice to the janitor, the old lady cashier. They're, they're nice to them. The black manager, no, he, he needs to know how to move. He needs to know how to, to deal with people or he'll get fired. They're going to talk to him real greasy. He's going to have to move a certain way. And that's the same for the nation state, any black nation state. Remember, the biggest conflicts between blacks and whites in the United States came when blacks had a strong economic base to where they could even fight back against the Ku Klux Klan. Remember, like I said, the African Legion was crunching the Klan up. These white guys got on here, they got mad as hell and flagged it when I said that. These kids also got mad. These cacks almost got mad when I also said they had, uh, let's be real here. Terrorism is only a thing when uh, quote-unquote Westerners take an L. Never the other way around, unless it's one of their pawns and it hurts their pockets. And we're seeing that play out right now. Now when the Westerners take a real terrorist hit, from some group that's not controlled, like ISIS, is controlled by the West. Almost all those proxy forces in Syria are Western-backed pawns via the totalitarian dictatorship, plus those that are being given medical and air support by an apartheid ethno state that will not be named. And so, yeah, they'll talk about those guys all day because it justifies them being in the region, wasting bombs, which gets money for Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin. Speaking of which, if you look at Jim Crow Joe's cabinet, he just put a, a, a Raytheon executive on there. He just happens to be a token nuke, but... Raytheon exec nonetheless. And that's what they're going to do. It's the Obama strategy all over again. You bring in a bunch of tokens. You harm the blacks. And you do everything that the left is against. And by the left, I mean the voting base. Not the actual party. Because we all know the party's center-right. AOC said that a long time ago. She knows she wasn't wrong at all. Which is why you have democratic senators and congressmen 
arguing against policies that the people who voted in Joe, Jim Crow Joe Biden are for. But as we've seen before Jim Crow Joe's even been inaugurated, he ain't with none of that. And the fake left is actually fighting against policies that their voting base has been pushing them to pass. And we've seen with this, that scumbag Pelosi, we know how that garbage, piece of garbage gets down. She literally got on stage and said, we lowered the stimulus package. We lowered it on purpose because we got Jim Crow Joe in there, so now we don't need to pander to our base anymore. We don't care about them. And you want to know why they don't care? It's because they're run by the white supremacist oligarchs. They don't need to pander to you no more. So they can go back to their tyrannical ways, just like Trump was doing. But they can be more extravagant, like they were doing under Obama. And it ain't just the foreign stuff. It's going to be domestic, like when Obama was in there going after blacks, harming innocent civilians via the cops, arming the cops to the teeth, using burn rights to go in there and beat the crap out of people in uh, no-knock raids, arresting and beating the crap out of people, having them naked, beating their ass, which is what they were doing, or under the cops, the laws put under the cops' grants. Where domestic cops in the jurisdictions could harm people with no consequences, just like the, the lawless little uh, groups operating under the Burns laws. And they'll argue, they'll come with these fake arguments like, oh, they're just going after criminals. If they were just going after criminals, why did Philando Castile get his brains blown out? Why did that little baby get a flash grenade in his face? Why did Daniel Shaver get his brains blown out, huh? Why did Patricia Cook get her brains blown out? And then after that, why is it that when her husband reached a $5 million settlement, he got his brains magically blown out? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? But they love to come with their little fake narratives because they don't want to hear anybody pushing the truth about the United States government being tyrannical. And I find that when it comes to tyranny, that gets funny because these guys talk this two-way stuff and two ways to be fighting tyranny. But when the tyranny shows up, they're quiet. Now, when middle-class white kids are out here burning down the CVS, oh, they're out in full force, burning Black Lives Matter flags and giving out dog whistles about how they should harm the blacks. And yeah, I know it's a race war. No, oh, it's a race war. There's been a race war here. Just like the race war in 1919. It's heating up. You saw them hanging those blacks in California. They hung the black guy up in Harlem. Claimed it was a suicide. The guy who they lynched in um, California then went to his brother's house, 20 deep, AK-47, this whole damn house, sprayed him up. It's how they get down in a race war. Coast to coast. Sniper attacks in and out, blasting blacks, innocent people. Hiding behind law enforcement. They're called ghost skins, getting those red laces. But even Louisville can't talk about that. Oh, that's hate speech. Pointing out white supremacist racism is hate speech, man. You gotta stop that. Talking about how Tamaris Bohannon was killed by a white supremacist. Tamaris was a black cop. The guy shot two other cops, was fighting to the death almost. Took him without incident. You want to know why? Because it's a fucking race war. They're starting the civil war in Ethiopia to balkanize it because it's a race war against the blacks. I know they'll play up some black guy robbing a CVS or a bodega or something. They'll play that up all day. Little gangbanger shooting in the hood. 1% of 40 million people in one country. They'll play that shit up all day. To take away from the fact that they're the ones that cause these 
racial conflicts, these ethnic conflicts that are killing people of other people, other races just because they're a different race. Throwing a little token here, a little token there to try and shut them up. And let those guys think, oh, if they get that guy a butter biscuit, they'll give me a butter biscuit. But no. Well, they're going to give you a $300 check over policing more prison sentences while they cook the books and fiddle with the stats. While your income goes down, your home ownership takes into the ground like it was doing during the entire Obama administration. Yeah. Yeah. And don't, uh, uh, hell, Jim Crow Joe, he, he got those fake black leaders. He got them in the room and he let them know, I'm not going to do a shit for you. Not only that, he started lying. Talking about how the NAACP always supported him. They never supported him. Never. And there's been plenty of people that did way more than he's ever done in his goddamn life. Don't ever listen to these people. These people are your goddamn enemy. These white supremacists are the ones who killed Fred Hampton at 21. Dude never killed anybody in his life. They blew his brains out. Because he was calling out white supremacists. They took the church banker named Martin Luther King. Propped him up. Then they killed him, his father, and his brother. They claimed it was Mossad. The same white supremacist oligarchs actually used a certain organization via a certain mafia of a certain ethnicity and took JFK off the mix and then had a patsy take the fall for it and then killed the patsy. And all you gotta do is look at the name of the guy who did the stuff to the guy and that'll paint the picture. But oh, oh, you can't talk about that. And he really was investigating underhanded deeds by those groups, that group of people. Yeah, and now we got this stuff that's currently going on, but I'll get into that later. End of the day, the WSO is ramping up their tyranny. And you know voting doesn't work. Civil disobedience, are you serious? Look at what's happening out here. They're not doing anything, and they're telling you they're not going to do anything. And all the while, they're doing exactly what they claim to be against, which is terrorism. And that's a fact. 